After returning to Buya from Inugu, Endele started having misgivings about reuniting southern Cameroons with French Cameroon. He was worried that after nearly 40 years of separation, southern Cameroons and French Cameroon would struggle to harmonise their cultural, linguistic, judicial, educational, administrative and political systems. Endele was inclined to think that being the smaller of the two partners in a union, southern Cameroons would eventually have to make significant concessions in order to achieve goals of national unity, equality and justice. By early 1955, Endele was still dragging his feet on the issue of the enfranchisement of French Cameroonians residing in southern Cameroons for fear of giving the UPC a political foothold and losing control of his party, the KNC, to influence from French Cameroon. He delayed a motion on this issue in the House of Assembly following a disagreement with the leadership of the UPC party over the question of establishing a UPC branch in southern Cameroons. There was also a matter of the escalating conflicts in French Cameroon between the administering authority France and the UPC. The UPC was advocating for the immediate decolonization, reunification and independence of French Cameroon following the revolt by and subsequent banning of the UPC in May 1955. Many UPC leaders were forced into exile and took up residence in Kumba in southern Cameroons. In the global political climate resulting from the Cold War, the governments of France and Nessent, French Cameroon, conveniently labelled the UPC a communist organisation, legitimising their use of lethal force in suppressing it. This would later lead to the little-known civil war of Cameroon in the late 1950s and 60s, where tens of thousands of innocent civilians were killed. This instability next door was one more reason that drove Endele to look away from French Cameroon and back towards Nigeria with the vision of integrating southern Cameroons as an autonomous region. Following Chief Awel Lowo's visit to southern Cameroons in 1954, Endele entered into an alliance with the Action Group, a political party in Yoruba, dominated western Nigeria, strengthening the unspoken desire to integrate with Nigeria. Considering that prevailing laws prevented French Cameroon residents including Robert D. Bongay from participating in elections. The reunificationists within the KNC increasingly felt trapped by Endele's on-off attitude towards reunification. As a result, in March 1955, John Foncher and Augustin Juha broke away from the KNC to form the Cameroon National Democratic Party KNDP. The KNDP's stated objective was secession from Nigeria and gradual reunification with French Cameroon. As required by the UN Trusteeship Council, visiting missions were periodically sent to trust territories to report on the progress of the territories towards achieving the objectives of self-government or independence. Following the 1955 visit of the UN mission to the Trust Territory, the mission commended the UK government for instituting a government and legislator in southern Cameroons and a constitutional council of elders in northern Cameroons. They commented that discussions about reunification in the Cameroons were merely based on pre-1916 sentimental feelings that lacked concrete proposals for affecting it. They largely endorsed continued administration with Nigeria for both northern and southern Cameroons. However, there were more important dissenters to the rosy picture painted by the visiting mission to the UN Trusteeship Council. The representative of Guatemala, Emilio Arnales, countered that the political union between the Cameroons and Nigeria was more than administrative union and that the division of the territory in two was contrary to the provisions of the trusteeship agreement. He concluded 
that these arrangements only prepare the Trust territory towards fulfilment of the UK's own agenda of integrating the territory into Nigeria. The representative of the Soviet Union, Arkady Zobolev, was even more critical. He deplored the lack of a timetable for independence or self-government by the UK and regarded the constitutional changes of 1954 as further consolidation of the UK's agenda of integration with Nigeria. He said neither the legislator in Southern Cameroons nor the consultative committee in Northern Cameroons had any powers as they were all still answerable to the governor of Nigeria in Lagos. And that was true, he concluded, by challenging the Trusteeship Council to provide a timetable for independence and to grant full regional status and authority to the Trust territory. In light of these developments and with the growing pressure within the Cameroons for increased autonomy, the administrating authority started making plans for another constitutional conference to consider upgrading Southern Cameroons, quasi-regional status to full regional status. By the time 1957 rolled around, the political tensions and differences of opinion about the future of the territory were revolving around at least four distinct choices as the ways forward for Southern Cameroons. Option one was integration with Nigeria, supported by the KNC and KPP parties. Option two was secession from Nigeria, a period of independence, then gradual reunification with French Cameroon, supported by Fonches, KNDP. Option three was an immediate reunification and independence, strongly advocated by Ernest one day and other leaders of the UPC party and subsequently de Kumazaz, one Cameroon party. OK was essentially the successor of the UPC party after the UPC got banned in southern Cameroons on May 30th, 1957. Option four was outright independence supported by the Council of Natural Rulers and Chiefs as well as a large percentage of the general population. This was also the preferred choice of a number of influential leaders and politicians, including Chief Stephen, who would later create the Cameroon's Commoners Party, CCC, Jesco Manga Williams, who would later create the Cameroon's Indigenes Party, CIP, and Paul Calais, who would later create the Cameroon United Party, KUP. While the OK Party initially supported the KNDP's position of reunification with French Cameroon, it was not in favour of Fonch's gradual reunification after a period of independence. Rather, like the UPC, it was advocating for immediate reunification. Because Enderley was against reunification, he ominously warned electors that a vote against integration with Nigeria would mean immediate rather than gradual reunification with Cameroon. As Foncha was then promising, for a short period of time, the OK party supported Endele on this argument because it favoured their desired outcome. Endele published a manifesto spelling out the reasons against joining French Cameroon. In it, he stated that in the long run, a union with French Cameroon would mean loss of freedoms of expression, of association, of movement, and even of life. That joining would mean loss of human dignity, conscription to a life of fear, and arrests without charge. After an intense political campaign season, the KNC won the March 15th, 1957 elections by a slim margin of six out of 13 seats, electing Dr. Endele as the government business leader of Southern Cameroons. At the Lagos Constitutional Conference of 1957, Southern Cameroons requested and was granted full regional self-governing status within the Federation of Nigeria. A cabinet system of government was introduced in the territory on May 15th, 1958, with Dr. Endele as Premier of Southern Cameroons. 
on the international stage with the passage of UN Resolution 1207, the 12th of December 13th, 1957, pressure continued to mount for the publication of schedules, for the attainment of self-government or independence by all trust territories. On February 19th, 1958, the Southern Cameroon's House of Assembly called for independence as early as 1959. On April 6, 1958, the natural rulers and chiefs called for complete separation from Nigeria and independence for Southern Cameroons. The fourth and final UN visiting mission arrived in Cameroon on October 29th and stayed through November 14th, 1958. The team comprised of George Solomon of Haiti, Ricky Jalpe of India, Graham Thorpe of New Zealand, and Benjamin Jirik of the US as chairman. At the conclusion of their visit, the mission declared that the people of Northern Cameroons were essentially one with the people of Northern Nigeria and strongly believed their future lay with Northern Nigeria. The mission believed that the people of Northern Cameroons would consent to a plebiscite to decide the future of the territory if so asked, but didn't think one was necessary. Concluding as they did, the mission failed to report the significant difference of opinions and the general call for a popular means of consultation in Northern Cameroons. This failure would be confirmed by the results of a plebiscite a year later. On Southern Cameroons, the visiting mission declared that the people were split between two positions, self-government as a region of Nigeria and separation from Nigeria for a purpose not yet clearly resolved. The visiting mission either failed to identify or simply chose to ignore the most popular option in the territory, which was independence or secession as it was called. It also chose to ignore the fact that Fonchia's position leaned more towards separation and independence than towards reunification. In response to the growing popularity of the KNDP's independence and reunification message, Endele's KNC party joined forces with the pro-Nigeria KPP in the period running up to the elections for the first regional government for Southern Cameroons. As the campaign trails turned to artillery minefields, the battles between the various parties raged on. Premier Endele set the date for elections as January 24th, 1959, with high hopes of winning the elections. Endele declared that the winning party's position would seal Southern Cameroon's fate. Surprisingly, or not, on December the 5th, 1958, three weeks after the UN's visiting mission's departure, but before their report was written, France declared that it would end its trusteeship and grant independence to French Cameroon on January the 1st, 1960. As for the British Cameroons, the UK vaguely stated that sometime in 1960, it expected to achieve the objectives set forth in Article 76B of the Charter of the United Nations. There were no utterances of self-government or independence in its declaration. 